Hey there, welcome back to doing it Dunlap style. Um, today, uh, I don't really know what we're gonna do. I'm gonna see about cleaning, cleaning the stator up. Um, may get, may possibly get into the water pump here. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna try to fix these stripped out bolt holes um but uh yeah i don't really know don't really know what all we're gonna get into uh like i said gonna try to clean all this mess up um the flywheel that i have if you didn't watch a previous video uh the magnets screwed up right there um, I haven't found another one yet. Uh, I'm kind of stuck in, stuck between trying to decide to buy a new one or buy a used one. All the used ones that I can find are about $250. Um, the new ones, I think I found, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I found one for around $320. Um, but but yeah, I'm not sure which way which way I'm gonna go on that yet. So for the time being, I'm just gonna put put this one back on there uh, until I make up my mind. Let's get started and see what we can get done. All right, so I don't know if you can see it or not, but for this uh, trigger coil, I think is what they call it. It's got a Allen head here right there and the Allen head, Allen head here. Number four Allen. Um, now this trigger coil comes out with the stator. So just so you know. I sprayed some uh, some penetrating oil on these two and then on these two here. Since it's all rusted and all that mess I mean, it was running. I'm assuming that the stator and the trigger coil are fine. Um, however, I saw the last video, it wasn't running that good. And I don't really know why other than, well, it was running better before, before I ever did anything with it. But I did run out of gas in the gas tank. So I'm thinking maybe there's some trash or something in the gas tank and maybe that got in the carburetor and caused some issues. But we'll look into that sometime later. And these two bolts right here for the stator, those are both 10 millimeter bolts. And then there's these three, three bolts right here. These bolts, three bolts right here, are, are size five. I didn't unplug the stator wires from, uh, I think, the CDI is where it goes. I didn't unplug them, unplug it or disconnect them. Um, if you're gonna mess with it, you you probably would wanna do that. Um, possibly, but I did disconnect the battery, so. Other than being nasty and dirty, I'm not seeing anything wrong with it. Um, myself, but then again, I don't know, don't know much anything about this stuff, but, uh, but if y'all see anything, uh, feel free to say something in the comments. 
so do y'all see this water seeping out of these holes right here y'all anybody know what that means if anything it has me puzzled yeah i don't really think there should be water coming out of there let's try to get this cleaned up it's not perfect but it looks more like a coal or i'm sorry more like a stator now it's a little bit cleaner but for me, since I'm since since I plan on keeping this keeping this four wheeler, it's gonna have to it's gonna it's gonna work for me good enough as far as the stator goes. Anyway, at least at least it's somewhat cleaner. Can y'all see that? Since I'm not familiar with these. I don't know if that's right or not. But that, I mean, I don't know if that's how it's supposed to look. But if you know, if you, if you have any idea or no, let me know down below. Uh, so that way I can get it taken care of. Let's uh, see about fixing these stripped out bolt holes. I'm concerned about this one and this one because of the water it's coming out. I don't know. I really don't know if that's supposed to happen or not so the only way that I know to fix these that are stripped out is to drill them out and uh, tap them and use a what they call helical put in there in the last video I showed these uh, bolt screws here um and see obviously they're different uh so these i had three of these in here here and they were one here one there and one there and i thought maybe they were uh it was like that from the factory but looking online it shows all the have it shows have all the same uh bolts through here from everything that I found. So you probably already noticed that these are shiny and new. So anyway, I just ordered more, ordered more, some more of these uh, and see if they'll fit in these three spots because I'm thinking these were just, they ran out of bolts. Somebody had been into it before and they found something that would work and uh, put them in there. So I'm gonna try I'm going to try doing it the way I think it's supposed to be and use these. I don't know if y'all remember that from earlier, but I'm going to go take a shot at getting it cleaned up. All right, here it is. It uh, looks a lot better than it did. Uh, I just used a wire brush on a, just a hand drill and held it in my hand and or held this piece in my hand while I, wire wheeled it i think did i say wire brush i used a wire wheel and a hand drill and it's pitted but at least it doesn't have all that ugliness all over it i got it now <clears throat> yep yippers 
that up there. Um, So these, these are multiple wire motor bolts, and they're, uh, they're important on them for these two. It's six to seven newton meters, and I'm gonna go kind of on that side. I'm working instead, right six. Trigger coil, trigger coil bolts are. They're, they're also six to seven newton meters. These stator bolts are 12 to 14 newton meters. Just real quick, go over it again. The stator wire holder bolts, bolts, which are these right here, they're six to seven newton meters or 53 to 62 inch pounds. Stator bolts, which is what I just did, these three right here, they're 12 to 14 newton meters or 106 to 124 inch pounds. And then the trigger coil bolts, they're six, six to seven newton meters or 53 to 62 inch pounds. Let me see, what do we have next? Uh, it's a flywheel, which I need to do some cleaning. I need to do some cleaning on that, so. All right, so. Here's a flywheel. Uh, I just use some. Uh, I use a wire wheel and electric drill. I have a vise over there that I put it in, but uh, at least it knocks some of that rust off. Um, here's the uh, Woodruff key. There we go. This flywheel nut, torque specs on it, it's 80 to 100 foot pounds. Or if you're doing newton meters, it's 100 to 136. Uh oh. Yeah, I bet I won't be able to. I bet I won't be able to get that torque down. All right, yeah, let's see. 80 to 100, it says. There we go. 
I will show you what I did to keep this from turning. And what I will say along with that is uh, that I probably wouldn't recommend it. But when you don't have the tool for it to hold the flywheel, you got to do what you can do. So anyway, I took this half inch drive breaker bar and then you see right down, I slid it right down through there. See my finger back there? Anyway, I slid, right, slid it right down through there and let it rest. Let it rest against the foot rest right there. Actually, I think I had it across sitting right there. But anyway, so that way, whenever I was torquing it on the other side, this would twist this way and this would act as a lever and would hold it, keep it from twisting. Like I said, uh, I did it. Uh, some, some people might say that that's a recipe and I, I would agree. Uh, if I broke if I broke the primary drive then I'd just get another one which are I know there's some cheap ones out there and then there's some really expensive ones but uh, that was that was a risk I was willing to take so basically you got to decide if it's for if you think it's worth the risk when doing stuff like that I'm sure you saw what I what I did there, which. But if you didn't, uh, took some <clears throat> grease, bearing grease, and just put a little bit inside there for the Bendix. Right here on the Bendix, according to the manual, it says to put Polaris something something grease on there. I'm just using some uh, Molly grease, like bearing, bearing grease. Um, so it's just to put, to put just a little bit on there. Um, in the in the manual, so. I don't know how well. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. But that's that's all I'm gonna put on there. Um, try to make sure that I get any of the rest of it off of the Bendix anywhere else. According according to the manual, you're supposed to have two of these thrust <clears throat> two of these thrust washers. Uh, one on each one on this end of the Bendix and then another one another one on this end um, that's according to the manual uh, but uh, I thought about just getting some oh uh, there you go I asked what happens whenever you don't pay attention I haven't figured it out uh, which most of y'all probably already know what happened. If you haven't figured it out yet, I should have put the Bendix in <laughs> before I put the flywheel on. Nah. I'll just lay a rag over it and do it. Do it like this. So, I'm thinking somebody has done this has has put helicals in them at one point in time or something and then just uh put some gorilla torque on them but 
anyway, what I'm going to use is just uh, it's basically a helical. It's a it's not a helical brand. It's a different brand, um, but uh, these are what I'm going to be using. It's just a drill bit for the right size, a tap for the right size, a cool insert tool, tang breaker, and then uh, and then over here you've got your uh, cool, your coils. It looks like they've already somebody. It looks like somebody before. Pretty sure. I don't even need to do that one. It's this one here. Um, it's almost like somebody before tried doing tried doing this same repair. But anyway, when you do this, you want to make sure that you're going in as straight as as straight as you can to the hole. Um, I'm putting just a little bit of a uh, three in one oil on here on the on the tap. Um, this for sure you want to make sure you get get started as straight as as straight as possible. I said people put chuckies under handrail, they come in, back out, they have a special. I can't make all the tap handle, they have a special handle for these, for these taps. And use that, or make sure it's Um. Anyway, like I said, I've seen some people use a drill and just zip them in and zip them back out. And uh, but what I've always been, what I've always heard to do is give it a few turns in and then back it out some, then turn it in some more back it out some that, that could be why there's water uh, there's, there's water coming out of these two holes here it could be because of whoever did this before perhaps they didn't know what they were doing kind of like me you want to make sure that you clean the threads clean the holes out uh, get all the metal shavings out that you can. You want to make sure you clean the metal shavings out of the the holes that uh, you threaded. Uh, you could, I just use brake parts cleaner. It's probably be better to use uh, air from an air compressor or something like that. But uh, I'm going to put blue Loctite on these. If I had red Loctite, that's what I'd use. Um, supposedly, they say it's not necessary, but to use anything. I don't know if I showed, explain this or not. Um, if uh, you see that inside that little hill coal is a, there's a little tang right there. And if you see there's a notch in this little tool here. And you put, slide the coal over the end of the tool and put that tang inside that notch and that way and that's what and that's how you screw it in and like I said these are meant to uh, they're meant to only go in below the surface just a little bit I'm going to go ahead and put the cover this flywheel cover back on uh, 
No, in fact, no. I'm going to leave the co the I'm going to leave this file cover off, um, and just let that let that Loctite set up and cure and stuff, and hope that it. Uh, Hope that it helps to make it hold better.